Okay, so we'll go over all the machines you need to make the prototypes. As I mentioned, the key machine is a water jet cutter. Uh, this is an OMAX 2654 water jet cutter. Now, uh, this is the only expensive piece of equipment you actually need. The, the poor man's version of this would be a plasma cutter, a CNC plasma cutter, like the ones made by Torchmate. A plasma cutter is about one-tenth of the cost and one-tenth of the operating cost. Then a water jet, but it's uh, much less versatile because it, of course, doesn't cut as well and can only cut metals and doesn't cut all metals equally well. A water jet can cut practically anything up to two-inch thickness or more and cuts beautifully. So the ideal machine is a water jet, but sometimes because of budget reasons for home use or whatever, you can do a lot of the things I'm talking about today, you can also do with a CNC plasma cutter. Okay, so the first thing is the modifications you need to do to improve uh, productivity. The most important modification is to add a sliding basket because when you cut out small parts, they drop into the tank. Sometimes even big parts have surprising ways to tip over the slats and drop into the tanks. And once it drops into the tank, which is full of discarded garnet, it's basically lost. The chances of retrieving it, if you ever tried, are very low. So the first thing you have to do is you have to make a moving basket and I'll show it here and the basket is resting on the bottom part of the U-beam which is holding the slats. Now the reason it's sunk below to be far enough from the jet not to be cut by the jet has to be about 8 inches or 20 centimeters below the top of the slats in order not to be cut. Now, you can move the basket by a pulley and you can pick it up, take it out and find all the little parts you lost. And also recover a lot of parts, you can be reused for other things like slug, metal slugs. You can just, okay. Now, the basket just sits on a cradle. It just sits on a cradle, you drop it in and you move it back to position. Okay. Now, for sheet metal, if you don't have a basket, you can leave things hanging off a tab and break them off. But unfortunately, anything thicker than, say, an eighth of an inch, this method doesn't work, because if you have a half-inch steel plate and you leave things hanging on a tab, you can't break them off. So basically you have to have this basket to save time. The second modification which is very desirable is to have some way to know where the beam will hit. And the best way I found is a laser pointer which shines through the beam pass, through the jet and shows where the beam will hit. And I understand this will be available from the OMAX Corporation, but right now this is a homemade one, so it's just like a normal laser pointer except at right angles. It's precisely made, it's precisely made so it fits exactly where the feed tube. You pull out the feed tube, you plug it exactly where the feed tube goes, and to keep the nozzle clean from water, you plug it into an air supply. Okay, uh, I'll just hold up a piece of paper so you can see the spot on the video much better. So you can see the laser pointer spot coming out. The place the spot will hit the metal is where the jet will hit the metal because it's going through the same feed tube. As a second benefit, the shape of the spot also measures the wear in the mixing tube. So just by looking at the shape of the spot, you know if you have to replace the mixing tube or not. So. This is especially important if you had to stop a job for any reason and then start cutting from where you left off before. So it's very important to align the beam. Second place it's important when you have to mix some precision holes with, with water jet holes and so you have to register the cutting to pre-existing features like build holes. So you use this. Now, <laughs> 
this cap here to guard from splashes, I found out that the best cap is actually half of a tennis ball, and that's what this is, which is much better than any of the caps supplied with the machine. The reason why it's better, it takes very little space, so you can come very close to the edge, and you can flip it over very easily to see what's going on. So one good modification is to add clamps like this, for example, that you can just tighten down. These clamps obviously are cut on the water jet, so it takes no time to make them. And they go from zero to one inch. And bigger stuff than one inch is heavy enough that you don't really need clamping. It will sit from its own weight. Okay, so a quick demo of something very inexpensive and useful called a plasma cutter or an air plasma cutter. Let's get it out. This is a top unit. It's very light. All that it needs is compressed air and regular power, household power. Uh, if you have a water jet cutter, you don't, you, most of the time you never use it, but you still need it sometimes if you want to cut a hole in a box or an enclosure which is too big to fit into the water jet. Let's say you're working on a car, you're working on a cabinet, you can't drag it into your water jet, but you still need to cut out a well-defined hole. So what you do is you cut out on the water jet a template, allowing for the oversize, allowing for the fact that there is a diameter here of the nozzle. So you cut an oversized template, clamp the template to the cabinet or whatever you want to cut, and use it just you follow it with this. Now, if your template is steel, sometimes it's a good idea to insulate this tip so it doesn't electrically touch the template and also keep some distance from the material you cut because you're supposed to keep a very small distance from the material you cut. So the best thing to do is machine a ceramic cap to go on it. Uh, right now, if I don't have one, I'm just wrapping cups on tape around it and that, that will be good enough just to cut one part. like this, it's good enough. So uh, what this does, it transfers the arc from an internal arc to the workpiece. So if I ground the workpiece, okay, first you see a butane bottle here, which is not a good idea to have where you're going to make sparks. So, and again, for a uh, it's the, it, you have to have goggles, not only because of sparks, okay, but also because of intense UV. This emits a lot of UV. Now these glasses are actually UV filtered, so it's okay. So it, so it cuts quite nicely. Uh, the cut is not nice because my hand isn't steady. But if you put the same torch on a CNC table, the cut is quite nice. Not as nice as water jet, but completely acceptable for sheet metal work. So if I wanted to cut, say, a hole here, and I couldn't take it to the water jet, I would make a template. Let's say this is a template. And I would clip it here, ground it from the template. Let's say I'll use one of these strange shapes. This and you, this is a template. You have to somehow clip it so you can still reach it with a gun. Okay. See, I can hold it with another piece of steel from the other side. Because, yeah, you have to you have to be able to go all around the template and. Okay, so I can knock it out. So it, it didn't do the greatest job because I didn't go steady, but what you can see, I copied that shape. So that's quite a useful thing for quick and dirty work, especially considering that the whole machine is about a thousand bucks or less. So very inexpensive. It will cut up to quarter inch steel. The bigger ones will cut up to three quarter inch steel. Uh, we'll cut stainless aluminum, but of course we'll not cut 
non-metallics will not cut well copper or materials which conduct the heat away very fast and so on.